welcome to another starter video and today we're going to be taking a look at the outrec2 command which is one way among others to produce nice and journal style tables from starter so we all know that when we just run a regular regression in starter the tables don't look much as what we see in journal articles this is where outrec2 is one of the packages that you can install and help you create very nice tables so in order to do this today i'll be using well, my help from my do file friend here, from which I already set up a few things. Clear out anything I have in memory, and I set my current directory to my starter videos here. Why is that so important today? Well, it's because I would like all the tables I produce to be found in this folder, so that we can take a look at them a little later. I've also already called in system use auto, because that's the example data set we will be using. Run the do file, you'll see everything runs here beautifully. The first thing we would have to do is install this package called outrec2. The installation command in Starter is called ssc install, followed by the name of the package you wish to install. Of course, I would know in this case that the package is called outrec2, so running this here would install the package if you don't have it. In my case, I already have it installed, so you'll see in a moment here it just says it's up to date. But for you, it would install it. I'm gonna comment this out because once I run my do file later again, I don't want to run my installation command every single time because I know I have it in the, well, on my hard drive. So how does this actually work now? Suppose we run a regular regression like we saw in a previous episode. We have price as a function of miles per gallon. That will be our starting point for this regression or this analysis. The way we do it is after a regression call has been made, you would then immediately run your outrec2 command. I would like to also say at this point here that the outrec2 help file is very, very good. So we can look here, it has a very, very large number of examples. So you can pretty much do all these things here. I'll be showing a few of them today, but I'd like you to also just go take a look and then you can see if you can add some of the extras to you for yourself to check out how it actually works. So I'm gonna close the help file and then just go back and use for my example here. We will always first write outrec2, that's the given command. Then you write using followed by a file name you would like to give your file. So I'm just gonna for this example call the file my file, but you can call it pretty much whatever you want as long as it follows, well, except the syntax. So this here is the basis command for outrec2. If I would run this here, so I'll run everything here, it would produce just a txt file opening here we see a text file, my file. Everything is written in here, okay? That doesn't really look like a journal style table. So let's close this again. And we can also just for sake of it, delete this file for now. I'm gonna come back to that later. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to translate this into say a Word document. We can also use tech and Excel of course, but starting with Word, all you have to do is write comma Word. This will produce an RTF file format which you can open in Word. Another way to accomplish this is simply just write dot .doc to specify the file type. So you can do either way here. I'm just gonna do both for the sake of it and then I believe I'll get both the, uh, Windows doc file, so a Microsoft uh, file in this case, so Word file, and of RTF format. Running everything again, let's go back and see what we get. You see here, we get the my file here and this is a Word document. Okay, that is perfectly fine. If I, and now you can already see that this actually looks very nice. Not too bad. Not an activated version, oh, shame on me. Hopefully it should work soon. Let's see here. We got everything here we need here. That looks quite okay actually. So let's see if we can build more on this for now. Let's close it again. And let's for the sake of it, just drop this comma word here, or let's just change this to comma word. They will give us an RTF file format. If you want it in Excel, you could just type Excel instead. If you want it in LaTeX, if you use LaTeX, which is also a very nice way to do it, you can just write comment tech, T-E-X. Okay, that's a good starting point. Further things we can do now is to, of course, we can specify, for instance, we only want three decimals, one way. We can also, of course, name our, tie, name our columns. I'll do that later. But first, I would like to say, if I run this again and I did not delete my file, it will give an error because the file already exists. So adding the option replace will make sure that you're replacing any existing file with the name my file. Of course, be careful if you don't want the file to be replaced. This is also the command you should add or the option you should add if you want to add multiple columns to your file. 
So if I run this here, it will generate a new file and I can even do it again and again. No worries because it replaces my file just with a new column. If I don't have a place and I run it again and again, I will simply just add columns to the word file or to produce. So add multiple of the same columns, which is not what we want, obviously. We can, of course, now run a different regression below. So now I want to run price miles per gallon, add the dummy four into the whole thing. Here, I can then after that run a new outbreak to command. And in this case here, if I would place replace in here as an option, it will replace the first regression. I only get the last one. That's not what we want. We want one column with each. Instead, I would then use append. Running this file here will now give me a new RTF file document here called my file, which of course I should have done. Let's go and look at the details here. So we get the newest one. We open here. We see the new RTF file format here. And indeed, we see here I get two columns, one for each of the price, the symbol in your regression, and one including the dummy here, each with three decimals. Very nice. And suppose now, for the sake of it, I want to add an additional column now where I use heteroscedastic robust standard errors instead of the regular standard errors. Closing this file again, minimizing this, and let's go back and just add everything again. I would then, of course, use append again because I'm just adding an additional column. So all I have to do is run my regression again with comma robust. Now, we would at this point have different models, and now it would be a good idea to name different titles in your document. So this is where the option C title for column title, and here you can say model one, and here you can say C title model two, for instance, and here you can say C title model three, or you can say model two hyphen and then robust to indicate that this is the one you use robust standard errors on. And then of course we can just press go for everything again. We go back and check the file. We've got the newest file right here. And now we should hopefully see one indeed with the names here, one column, two column, three. And we see indeed that this is just the one with robust standard errors. You see the standards changed a little bit, right? If you want other options, I would advise you just to check the, the help file for Outrig 2. But this here should cover the basis on how to make a nice table. Remember, a good self-contained table is a table from which the reader will only have to read the table itself and the accompanying notes below and understand everything that's going on. Failure to do so and you do not have a self-contained table, which is, well, not what you want, right? You want a good table. I, hopefully, uh, I hope that this video is uh, found useful. And with that said, that's all I have to show for you today. And have a good one and until next time.